the bulletin, the tenebrae is Latin for shadows or darkness. And uh, tonight we'll be focusing on the, the cross and Jesus' death on the cross. It's a very somber service. Um, we, oh, good. I'm glad, I'm glad Jody caught that. At the end of this service, it'll be totally dark in here except for just the lights for the musicians. And if you're uncomfortable trying to get out in the dark, we just suggest that you stay seated. On the back, it says you're invited to stay for a time of silent meditation. And when you choose, leave the church in silence. And so after, after we get it dark and we finish, we will bring the lights back up so you'll be able to see to get out if you need to. So we just want you to be safe, it's the main thing. Okay, thank you for being here tonight. We are delighted that we have Esther playing a solo on her sax tonight. So.
That was beautiful. Esther, thank you. Will you bow with me as we say our prayer? Lord Jesus, on this Good Friday, um, we just remember with repentance and gratitude the agony and the shame and the, the darkness and the desolation that you endured on Calvary for us and for our redemption of all mankind. And as we meet under the shadow of the cross, we ask you to help us to understand how much it really cost you. And we um, are so grateful that you were able to bear our sin, that um, God, through tonight's service, we ask that we can understand and comprehend how much you love us so that we may grow and love you and serve you better. In your name we pray. Amen.
from the Gospel of Mark. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him. And he began to be deeply, deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, Holy God, Abba, it's hard for us to imagine the events that took place in the Garden of Gethsemane the night Jesus was arrested. Your Son, our Savior, on his face, begging you to deliver him from the events he knew were ahead of him, yet resolutely submitting to your will. Your desire was the desire of Jesus. Abba, Father, may we learn from Jesus' example so that your desire will be our desire. Jesus knew that the worst part of his anguish, his suffering, wouldn't be the nails, but the cup that was filled with your wrath against sin. Jesus knew he would bear the weight of the sin of this world, past, present, future, all sin, my sin. Abba, Father, we are guilty of falling asleep. We fall into temptation. Our spirit is weak. Our flesh is weak. Word of God, speak to us tonight. May we be ever mindful that the cup of wrath should have been ours. The horrific anguish Jesus felt was so that we can experience your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand as we sing, Lead Me to Calvary.
Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with him. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, um, they brought swords and clubs and they arrested your son. They brought a kiss and they betrayed him. Then they deserted him. They just left him to suffer and they brought whips and they beat him. They brought nails and they crucified him. This they did, Father. They did not know who he was or why he came, but we do. And we thank you, Father. We bring thanks tonight because of what he accomplished, because of him. We have life because of his death. We bring him honor and we praise him for being who he is and what he did. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days we'll build another not made with hands. Yet even their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you this evening in a solemn time of reflection concerning this moment in history seeing how you, Lord Jesus, are about to pay the ultimate price for our sins and the sins of the world. We see how judges, teachers, elders, and priests have come together to falsely accuse you and how you respond to those accusations without malice, even though in your spirit you know the path to the cross is before you. And in your spiritual distress, knowing what is to come, you said nothing. As those around you falsely accused you, testified against you, and illegally tried you. Here, we see the sin of man conspiring against you, Lord Jesus, revealing to us just how dark and blind sin is. This evening, we ask that you show us our sin, and not that we defend it, but that we remain silent before men but repentant before you, O Lord. Thank you, dear Lord, for the light that is to come, the light that chases away the darkness and provides us with an everlasting light. That's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Mark 14, verses 66 through 72. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene, Jesus, she said, but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a while, those standing near it, Peter said to Peter, surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Let us pray. <clears throat> Jesus, you know what is in our hearts, just as you knew that Peter would disown you three times. We pray that you will give us the strength to be strong and obedient in our faith. Help us to share the love that we have for you with our family, friends, and others. We know this is not the end of the story, for Jesus forgave Peter for his denial. We know he will forgive us for all our many sins. We ask in all of these things in his precious name. Amen.
Mark 15, 1 through 15. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they, found, they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews, asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priest accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they're accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionist who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews, asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call king of the Jews, Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder. Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Let's pray. Holy Father, even when they shouted, crucify him, your sinless, innocent son was willing to suffer such pain and agony to bear the sins for all mankind. We are forever blessed because of his great and unimaginable sacrifice. Thank you for your precious gift of salvation through Jesus. In his holy name I pray, amen.
the shadow of ridicule. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are brokenhearted as we recognize our own sins. Your pain must be even greater than ours, Lord, for your son was innocent. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us. Fill us with your presence this night, Lord. Help us to truly understand the holiness and the sacrifice this night for us. Lead us to the resurrection, Lord, on Sunday and all the hope to come that we may be changed forevermore. Amen.
at noon, darkness came upon the whole land until three in the afternoon. In the three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling out to Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Join me in a moment of silence. It was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Jesus of Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, He gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then they rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. 